This is Glenn Hauser with World of Radio, 2225. World of Radio is a listener-supported public service program about communications around the world, above all shortwave. This edition recorded January 11th. Antarctica, Argentina, Botswana, Brazil, Canada, China, Congo DR, Cuba, Curaçao, Denmark, Ethiopia, Germany, Indonesia, Iran, Isle of Man, Israel, Japan, Korea South, Mexico, Moldova, Myanmar, North America, Sudan South, Tibet, UK, USA, Vanuatu, and the Propagation Outlook. Standard Disclaimer. Secondly, a word of warning to all from Arthur Delibear. I just received an email purportedly from Glenn DX, an obvious attempt to play off the reputation of Glenn Hauser and trick us into opening it and clicking on the attachments. But it's actually from some strange and unrecognizable email address. So if you see it, delete it. LRA 36, Antarctica was on the air again Saturday afternoon, January 6th on 15475.98 reduced carrier USB was already on the air when I tuned in at 17.43. It is via a remote receiver in Argentina, but at 23 UT I could hear a trace of a signal direct, including that reduced carrier. It was still going past midnight UT into January 7th. At midnight 35 they started their Antarctic ham bulletin identifying as LU1ZV in Spanish of course including historical radio news from many years ago, hardly a breaking bulletin. But it was off the air sometime between then and my next check at 0202. The way other than the ham bulletin, most of the programming this week seemed to be not originating at LRA 36, but a relay of Radio Nacional from Buenos Aires. Manuel Menes explains that a visit was expected on that date to Morambio Base and then Esperanza by the new president of Argentina. Bill Telford, now a columnist for the NASA Journal, says, One hopes against hope, but LRA 36 could prove to be a casualty of deeper cuts to Radio Nacional by the Millet administration. I might find myself writing an obit for the station. There's a story at MercoPress.com, dated November 21st. No more public radio TV and news agency under Millet. Javier Millet announced he would privatize the state-run public TV, national radio, and the news service tell him because he did not adhere to those practices of having a covert ministry of propaganda. He says it has to be privatized. The same with Radio Nacional. Everything that can be in the hands of the private sector is going to be in the hands of the private sector. And then Bill Ford's a much more recent story, January 5th, from newsrnd.com. Famous artists and journalists on the list of 500 dismissed from Radio Nacional, part of the adjustment plan until the privatization proposed by Millet in the omnibus bill is resolved. And that story going into much more detail but not mentioning Antarctica was sourced to Clarín, Botswana. Ron Trotto in Illinois was hearing a week station on 7480, January 11th from 0402 to 0440 in an unknown language, nothing listed. Ron Howard recorded an interval signal at 0456, and programming resumed at 0500. Listen carefully, and you may recognize VOA. It turned out to be their Kinyaranda and Kirundi service via Botswana, probably on 7480 by mistake instead of 7460, as Mauno of WRTH points out. John Filiozzi in Florida also says it's VOA. I've heard this interval signal elsewhere when the transmitter loses contact with the satellite feed. In Radio Clube do Pará, Brazil, 4885, one of the few remaining signals from Brazil on the 60-meter band 
it had been off the air since before Christmas, tried to make a comeback. January 6th, UT at 0147, there was a, a carrier, and it was also being heard by Manuel Mendes in Spain. But it was much weaker than usual, we agree. There was some modulation by the time he heard it, 0604, relaying news from Radio Bandeirantes. After that week appearance, the next night, UT January 7th, no signal. On UT January 8th, there was a carrier, and on January 10th, Mike Bew in Austin, Texas, at 0138, said a strong carrier detected, but with weak audio undermodulated. There are a number of shortwave pirates in Brazil, and they could appear just about anywhere, not within a particular preferred band as in North America. I was looking through the IB listings and pulled out all of those I could find, the ones starting with the name Radio, and here they are, in case someone can pick them up. They're rarely reported, but someone must have heard them sometime for them to be listed. Kaza Aemi, 4005-5900-7455, and 8000 even. Turi, T-U-R-Y, on 6265 and 13525. Ancharis in Pará, 7400. Araucaria on 9290, between 09 and 23. The others could be on the air any time in the 24 hours. Pink, P-I-N-K, on 9485. Transglobi, 12,000 even. Alpha Centauri on 7540. And Cidade Olgis, 7685, 13555, 15010, or 21500. Chuck Gessner, W3ON, reports hearing... Canada's time signal station, CHU, on 15700, 1945 past 2008 UT on January 11th. That would be the second harmonic of 7850. I happen to tune past there myself and did not hear it. The second harmonic of their other frequency, 3330, has been reported several times from Michigan on 6660, but I've not yet heard it. So some other possible harmonics of the three frequencies of CHU would be 29340-9990-23550. It's hard to find music on shortwave. It seems most stations are mostly talk for some reason. I was looking for some music to lull my nap on January 9th at 2040 UT and finally found some on 11830. It's Fire Dragon. At times it seems like there was a whining voice, but surely that was only an instrument and lots of percussion. It chopped off abruptly at 2100, and there was never any announcement or time signal. And there was no trace of its target, according to Aoki, Radio Free Asia in Chinese, via Tinian, from 20 to 21. Upon Asilomar State Beach, California, Ron Howard reports on 5050, Bay Bu Bay Radio from China, January 6th at 1513 to 1515. That's two minutes, the daily brief English program, One Word, One World. That day about the opening ceremony for the Chinese art exhibition in Thailand at the National Gallery. He says, these English spots I find rather annoying. The background music is often too loud, making it difficult to make out what is being said. From the Global Media Briefing of the Association of International Broadcasting for January, while covering voting operations in Kinshasa, Radio France International Correspondent Pascal Mulegua was attacked and brutalized December 20th by supporters of a candidate in the DR Congo presidential election. And of course, RFI strongly condemns this. Ron Howard observes that Cuba's Radio Bebelde continues to be silent on 5025. Is it permanently gone? David E. Crawford of Indian River City, Florida, monitors Radio Havana, Cuba extensively. His detailed report is in the World of Radio IO group. He says for national stations, 5025 Bauta remains off. 4765 Progress remains on as of 6 January. It was professionally DF to Bauta, but it doesn't seem to correlate with any major full site outages at Bauta when they occasionally happen. The transmitter sites are relatively close together for direction finding purposes, so it may indeed be at the usually listed Behokal. So the general trend of deterioration continues. He says, will the Chaikoms or Putkin fly in some texts and fix everything? Or will Radio Cuba finally run RHC shortwave to complete and permanent failure? Following up last week's report about Curacao's 860 AM station closing down, Benjamin Dawson of Hatfield Dawson Consulting Engineers says, Curam Broadcasting is a subsidiary operating company of the Curam Foundation, a non-profit entity. For the two station licenses, Z86 AM and My95 FM, the operating company requested bankruptcy to allow a reorganization of some sort and anticipates returning to on-air 
in a couple of months. John Collins in Birmingham says, Radio 208 from Denmark, heard with rock music on 1440 kilohertz at 0420 UT, January 9th. Reception fair, a low-powered station. Songs by Led Zeppelin, etc. They don't seem to play full tracks of the songs. There was an English ID recorded as Rock Radio. 208 meters used to be the frequency for, of course, Radio Luxembourg. And as well as being on 1440 AM, Radio 28 is also heard on 5970, putting out 250 watts. Regarding the clandestine for Ethiopia, we've been hearing on 15710.1. Saturday is only scheduled at 16 to 1630. In communication of the British DX Club, they say, Moresh, M-O-R-E-S-H, voice of Amhara Radio, is a new target broadcast in Amharic via Isudun, brokered by Radio Miami International. It's also scheduled, according to HFCC, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 04 to 0430 on 9590, also via Isudun. And their website is www.moreshwegenie.org. There are voices of Amhara recordings on YouTube from 2016, so it may be a revival on short wave. Regarding last week's report that Reiner Ebeling broke his leg while working on an antenna at Channel 292, and thus that German low-power station is off the air. Here's more about that. hans Jürgen Wiener in Germany says their three frequencies were back on the air as of January 7th, 3955, 6070, and 9670. Tony Pavic, NBC of Pop Shop Radio, hears directly from Reiner Ebeling, who said, We are at the moment only on 3955 and 9670 on an hourly basis. All programs that have been canceled are still canceled and will be made up for or replaced. It's not yet possible for me to do any work on the transmitters or antennas. Then Tony Pavic received another email from Reiner on January 11th. Unfortunately, there are problems in the attachment of the antennas. This was just in progress when I had the accident. In my current condition, it's impossible for me to fix the problems. So unfortunately, we have to take a complete break from broadcasting until I can move my broken leg again. That will probably be at the beginning of February. I'm sorry I cannot bring you better news. Well, we're sorry to hear of your broken leg, Reiner, and wish you the best. This, of course, also affects many other programs, such as encore classical music, but that can still be heard at various times on WRMI. On out in California seems to be the main monitor of Indonesia's last domestic shortwave station, RRI Nabiri Pro 1, on 7289.93. His latest reports on January 6th heard from 0751 until off at 0914. However, the interference started, the noise started at 0845, sounded like jamming or DRM. On January 8th, not sure whether they were on the air before 0815, when there was a very poor signal. But by 0902, it had faded up very nicely for the Islamic Shalawat Tarhim prayer. And more Islamic prayers, easy listening songs. At 0945, they were still on the air. Loud English broadcasts from Iran, in communication of the British DS Club, Dave Kenny says, Tony Rogers confirms that the 1920 to 2020 Arab English broadcast is active, but only on 11880 to Africa. A carrier is detectable on 11800, but audio is almost non-existent. And Tony notes that the Parse Today website no longer lists an English broadcast to Europe, so the only remaining English are from VIRI at 1520 to 1620 to South Asia on 9650, 1920 to 2020 to Southern Africa on 11880. Also in BDXC, Manx Radio Isle of Man celebrates their 60th anniversary in 2024 and broadcast a special documentary on New Year's Day. It is available as a podcast from their website, www.manxradio.com. It's about Island Life series, episode of Manx Radio at 60. Via International Vacuum, Internet, AM, FM, and Shortwave, World of Radio 2225. A non-commercial service, as is our website, worldofradio.com. Our thanks this week for financial support from Joe Caberlin of Port Colborne, Ontario, who sent some spare U.S. dollars to Glenn Hauser, P.O. Box 1684, E-N-I-D-O-K, 73702, USA. One may also contribute via PayPal, not necessarily in U.S. funds, to W-O-R-A-D-I-O at yahoo.com. Now about the reactivated 1287 medium wave frequency, by Galait Sahal, Israeli Defense Forces. 
It was selected for Voice of Hope because it allowed high power operation. The sign to and was previously used by the IDF. Likely the present use is from the VOH facility in northern Israel. Triplex with 882 and 1458 kilohertz had a site owned and operated by the Israeli communications facility company Bezek, B-E-Z-E-Q, says Shalom, Benjamin Dawson, of Oregon and Washington, of Hatfield Dawson Consulting Engineers. As I pointed out last week, 1287 is still claimed to be used by Voice of Hope from Israel, according to its home page. But Kai Ludwig explains further. The use of 1287 by Voice of Hope started in 2017, ceased at the end of 2019 or early 2020. I suspect they would, when asked about it, say they continued referencing 1287 AM as merely a part of the branding at least in their latest circular, they acknowledge that streaming and social media are the only remaining distribution platforms. As to why Galeid Sahal has suddenly resumed medium wave 1287 and also and 4 or 5 kilohertz, Donny Rosenzweig forwards a story from the Jerusalem Post of January 2nd. Communications Ministry funds network reception for bomb shelters. The transmitters provide radio reception coverage from Matula to Beersheba, extending into protected areas and shelters that is better than their FM network could do. About the reduced shortwave capacity from the KDDI Yamata site in Japan, Takahito Akabayashi explains, there are seven shortwave transmitters, five of 300 kilowatts and two of 100. They'll probably be removing one of each power. Stephen Luce assumes we will also see reductions in overall output from Yamata at the beginning of the A24 season. Kai Ludwig agrees, Shokaze being able to transmit on one frequency only probably inadvertently gives away NHK plans for the next stages of phasing out shortwave. By the way, on Wednesday, January 10th, Ron Howard says Shokaze was not in the usual English, instead a special program in Japanese, fair reception on 5930, and parallel interfered with 7335. Ron Howard also reports about Echo of Hope VOH from South to North Korea on 4885. January 6th was an extremely rare day with the normal North Korean jamming silent at tune in 1034. It did not hit until 1039. Following a number of changes, let's go over the complete English language shortwave schedule from KBS World Radio South Korea from their website via Alokesh Gupta. For Europe at 15 to 17 on 9515 and 22 to 23 on 11810. North America 13 to 14 on 15575 when it hardly propagates in the winter. South America, 10 to 11 on 9570, or Southeast Asia, 8 to 1030 on 9770, and 13 to 14 on 9570, 16 to 17 on 9640. Also, there's a broadcast for India, but apparently non-directional, at 14 to 16 on 9630. Via Pedro Sedano of AER, Guia de la Radio reports that Radio Educación in Mexico is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. So there may be some special programming. Check their website for more about it, www.radioeducacion.edu.mx. In Mexico City, they're on AM 1060 and FM 96.5, also in Hermosillo, Sonora, 104.3, Merida on 107.9. And, of course, shortwave as Cultura Mexico Señal Internacional on 6185. From Moldova, occupied by Russia, Pridnestrovia, or Transnistria, a correction to the schedule for the reactivated 999 kilohertz super power transmitter relaying Radio Rossi. According to Rusty X, the silent period overnight is between 23 and 03 UT. Ron Howard monitors Myanmar radio on 5985. There's an English segment at 1530, but January 6th, he says there was significant interference from Turkey now on the same frequency, but that faded out by 1545. Ron says Turkey on 5985 is very bad news. The frequency has been in the sole possession of Myanmar for a very long time. Now with Turkey starting at 15 UT, there's considerable interference for the Myanmar signal. Tony Pavic in BC also notes Myanmar buried by Turkey. Another Myanmar frequency is 5915, or was. Ron Howard now says on this of January 10th, it's moved to 5919.0. Avoiding interference from China Radio International, heard from 1220 UT. And again on 5919, January 11th, heard from 1045. Hope it will be permanent. Chris Mackerel in New Zealand says a good signal around 1245. 
North America, the Pirate in Arizona or Sonora, Hikari FM, surely the source of the off-frequency carrier I often hear on 11514.9 at many times of the day and evening. Gary Pence in Dallas says he found a remote picking it up better. It's the KPH Point Reyes, California one. And he recorded an ID amid some music at 0218 UT on January 10th. Actually, 11514.89, Gary says, amid some soft jazz instrumentals. To down south, Don, Dave Kenny in PDXC Communication says, I checked Radio Tamazuk on Friday, 8 December, and found English at 1530 to 1540 on 15550 Madagascar and 21485 France. The morning broadcast no longer seems to carry English news. Also in BDXC communication, Malcolm Kirk reports on 27 December, the English program from Xinjiang or Tibet, carried from 16 to 17 UT daily, formerly known as Holy Tibet, is now identifying as Hello Xinjiang, best heard in the UK on 7385. Editor Dave Kenny says the website vtibet.cn still refers to Holy Tibet in text and audio content. IGH always thought that was rather cheeky for the CHICOM to refer to anything as holy. Ron Howard in California also monitors this on 6200. Holy Tibet in English, January 10th. For the first time hearing the new intro with frequent clear IDs as Hello Shizang, that's X-I-Z-A-N-G and no references at all to the former Holy Tibet. Some delayed news posted January 4th from Tracy, G5VU in the IRCA group. I am the bearer of very sad news. My good friend Andrew Iken, I-K-I-N, of Wellbrook Communications, passed away on 25 October after a very short illness. He was buried on 10 November, a day before his 79th birthday. Andrew was internationally known and respected. His products were second to none, and his reputation for customer service renowned. I was lucky enough to count him as a friend, and I will sorely miss him. The amateur radio and radio listener fraternity have lost a true colossus. And this was followed by many more replies expressing these same sentiments, such as from Chris Sentence in the British DX Club. Those of us who use Wellbrook loop antennas to battle QRM will be forever grateful for Andy and his wonderful products. I was saddened when he closed his business last year, I just hope that my antenna continues to defy the elements. BBC World Service forces North American shortwave listeners to tune in off-target broadcasts. As we mentioned recently, 11825 via Philippines is good at 23 to midnight UT. John Filiozzi in Florida says the previous hour, 22 to 23, is also good from Philippines on 9580. Rodney Johnson in Minnesota monitors many BBC newscasts and reports them in great detail so he knows the best frequencies to find at various hours, at 04UT 12095 Madagascar, at 05 6195 Vatican, at 06 7285 Saint Thomas, at 0630, I guess from 06 as well, 11810 Ascension, and at 1130 9580 Philippines. There's also been a lot of discussion about the campaign to keep BBC Radio 4 on long wave 198 kilohertz. From the winter bulletin of the British Vintage Wireless Society, via Dave Kinney in the British DX Club Communication, a statement from BBC has been obtained, an official one on the switch-off of Radio 4 Long Wave, thanks to the persistence of Don Foster of BVWS. There is still some uncertainty about the actual closure of 198 kilohertz. BBC is still migrating Radio 4 content from Long Wave to FM and DAB platforms, and the final closure could be towards the end of 2024. Via IRCA, a crypto transmission is coming up from KPH. The Maritime Radio Historical Society, in cooperation with the Cipher History Museum, present a unique over-the-air cryptographic challenge. On January 20th, KPH will transmit a coded message consisting of five-digit groups encrypted using typical Cold War numbers station cryptographic procedures. All listeners are invited to try to receive and decrypt the message. Certificates will be awarded to those who successfully decode it. It starts at 21 UT Saturday, 20 January, on all CW and RTDY frequencies, which are listed here, 
and will be repeated on our TTY frequencies only. See the website for all the details if you want to try this. It's www.radiomarine.org. Look for their events calendar. Via Alan Rowe, Marion Webster writes that Marion's Attic has reached its 1,000th edition. Actually, the number 936 recently, but there were several other programs not enumerated before. In fact, 64 of them adding up to 1,000. So on January 14th, there will be a repeat of the 1,000th show on WBCQ 7490 variable at Sunday at 22 to 23 UT. Finally, on January 5th, we were pleased to observe that WWCR had finally repaired its number one transmitter with normal good modulation on 3215, 15825, and 6115. WMLK Pennsylvania has been missing lately from their one transmission on 9275 normally 17 to 22 UT. Nothing at all heard there when I checked on January 10th and 11th. The last log I found of it was on December 18th by Wolfgang Buschel. So I wonder what's wrong. Perhaps they should be back by January 15th, even though MLK does not stand for Martin Luther King. Big news in domestic U.S. broadcasting is that Odyssey, A-U-D-A-C-Y, owner of hundreds of radio stations, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy reported among many other places in Variety.com on January 7th. There's lots of speculation about what this will actually mean. Ben Dawson says it's an 82% haircut for the lenders, and that's tantamount to baldness. Uncle Bill Tilford says they get to continue with the same leadership team and operating model. They wonder why so many people have lost faith in capitalism. Accountability for failure was the whole point of the concept. However, RadioInsight.com via Mike Terry says, on the same date, CBS News has agreed to a new multi-year affiliation agreement with Odyssey to continue to provide its full news and programming to 27 stations, including WCBS New York, CanX Los Angeles, and KCBS San Francisco, and their FM affiliates. Joe Hanlon says WCBS 880 New York is replaying its late edition every hour from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Eastern, a poor example of the direction Radio News is headed. Mike Cooper in Georgia says WCBS offers a good example of cost-cutting destroying the product. The early morning hours consist of a pre-recorded hour-long program repeated hour after hour. One morning I heard the same thing at 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., including the CBS News on the Hour. At least WBBM 780 Chicago still seems to be live overnights. But Greg Hardison replies, I don't know about that. It seems I'm hearing WBBM's time checks presented as so many minutes after the hour quite generically. At best, they could be recording two overnight hours, playing them back alternately. On IRCA, Scott Fiber says, Do not be surprised at the attrition rate for AM stations. As a broker, I can no longer sell a standalone AM for anything more than the value of the land under its tower. If it even still owns the land, any residual value comes from an FM translator. The pace of AM attrition is about to increase exponentially. The medium may not be dead, but it's very close now. Ron Howard observes that since January 6th, Radio Vanuatu is no longer on 9960 until 07 UT. They're already on the lower frequency 3945, which is not very audible our way. The propagation outlook from SWPC. Geomagnetic field, quiet to unsettled. But A and K and C is no higher than 8 and 3, but mostly 5 and 2, all the way until February 3rd. Solar flux descending from 170 January 11th to a low of 130 January 27th, and back up to 165 by February 3rd. Glenn Hauser, concluding World of Radio 2225, with a standard disclaimer.